Welcome back to the latest anime and manga news for the week ending February 29th, 2020, Leap Year Day. Time for some anime news to leap over, starting, sadly, with some news of cancellations. The coronavirus, COVID, has uh, resulted in a number of, of cancellations this week, in addition to last week. Um, the Doraemon uh, and Shimajiro anime films have been delayed due to the COVID-19 concerns as Japan has asked schools to close until April. Um, the Anime Tourism Association has canceled uh, its international experience. Anime Japan 2020 has been canceled. Um, the Seiyu Awards were canceled. Um, a Love Live event was canceled by Bandai Namco. Um, several um, other um, uh, pop idol uh, events were canceled, and anime broadcasts in general have been delayed by at least a week due to uh, either concerns about the coronavirus uh, uh, outbreak or through actual like, production delays that folks can't get stuff done on time because of, of that stuff. And um, understand that anime production is a global process now. You have folks from all over the world um, uh, producing music, uh, working on animation, so forth and so on. So it's not like everything about um, uh, everything about anime is done in Japan. They've got international partners in other parts of East Asia. So that is a uh, definitely a concern. And obviously, also Japan is just trying to um, you know limit the amount of people moving around uh, just in general, so folks can't go to work. Um, so yeah. Coronavirus, definitely a huge impact on anime this week, and uh, here's hoping that that um, gets resolved relatively, relatively quickly. Um, so if you're not sure why your favorite anime has not been updating recently, that's what's going on. You may have to wait a week or two for things to start back up. I will definitely keep you informed of any other updates. Um, we have gotten news of a new anime, however. Um, but one that you might want to close the door before watching. Uh, Ore no Yubi di Miderero is an adult manga, and um, it is getting a, an anime adaptation in both a, uh, what are they calling it? It is a, a standard version and a complete version, meaning a broadcast-friendly version, one you can watch on TV, and one that will be rather steamier. Um, that will be uh, available out there. The story is about, let me see if I can uh, find the details here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where was the details? I um, thought I had it right up here. Nope, can't find it. Sorry about that. Um, what's funny is that it will have a completely different set of voice actors. So the you know, the standard version will have different voice actors than the complete version, presumably because, you know, they don't really want to sign their names to things. Although we do know that often voice actors will do more adult roles just under assumed names. Um, so obviously if they do that in this case, we'll know, we'll tell it's the exact same voice. Um, but kind of funny that that's how they're going to do that. Um, the, let's see here... Um, do, 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 do. The plan is for it to premiere on Tokyo MX on April 5th, um, although technically it's 1 a.m. April 6th, um, and that's going to be kind of interesting, and then it will uh, show on, I believe, a streaming service, uh, the, the complete version. So that is a thing that's coming, and that is a thing that's, that's happened before. We've had a, a handful of these uh, more adult manga adapted into both a broadcast version and an unedited, uncensored version, if you will, uh, that add more scenes and make it um, rather more than that. Kind of an interesting uh, approach to take. I can imagine being a publisher of this sort of stuff and saying, well, we want to get it out there. Why not have a, you know, an all-ages, maybe not an all-ages version, but a, a less adult version um, that we can actually broadcast out there and potentially make some money off of. So it does make sense in that sense. So who knows? Um, moving on, Crunchyroll has revealed uh, seven anime series that they're calling Crunchyroll Originals. Um, I'm sorry, um, not seven, eight Crunchyroll Originals. I take that back. Um, um, it, uh, seven down there because one of them has already been revealed, technically. Um, Inspector, which is right there. There we are is a recent anime series on Crunchyroll that turns out is one of these eight 
uh, Crunchyroll Originals. What that basically means is that Crunchyroll put some money in to uh, essentially invest in and fund these anime series. So it's a little weird in that, yes, um, Crunchyroll clearly got some kind of exclusivity deal with these. I'm sure they're the only ones able to stream them. Um, but I don't know if they're, they're really like uh, Crunchyroll originals in that sense, because they're going to be presumably out in other places. I don't know. Um, but uh, they are going to, they're a uh, wide variety, so we've got historical fiction, romance, fantasy, um, adventure, you know, you name it. Um, they've got, you know, Kodansho, um is involved in at least one of them. Um, and so, kind of interesting to see. So, Inspector, obviously already out on Crunchyroll. They've got Tower of God coming out, which is based on a, a webtoon production, a dark fantasy series about a, a young man battling his way through a, the Tower, capital T Tower. Um, a bunch of other um, various and sundry things. God of High School, Onyx Equinox, Noblesse, uh, Meiji Gekken, Sword and Gun, which is the, the historical show. Um, former Samurai, Yakuza Bodyguard, etc. Freak Angels and High Guardian Spice, uh, which looks sort of, um, that's the one down there, it looks sort of more, um, uh, a little more Nickelodeon-esque, if you will. Um, interesting uh, uh, direction, though, and certainly not the first time that Western companies have helped to finance some anime, um, and uh, here's hoping that that will help the industry get more stuff made and help the industry, you know, be, be stronger because that's usually a pretty good thing. Um, but that is not the only announcement this week about upcoming anime. Netflix announced they're partnering with a number of creators on upcoming anime uh, productions, including Clamp, legendary creators behind O oh, Cardcaptor Sakura, uh, Holic, Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle, X, number of really cool things. And uh, so they're going to be working on something. Um, Shin Kibayashi, who worked on The File of Young Kindaichi and Drops of God. Um, Yasuo Otagaki, who worked on Gundam Thunderbolt and Moonlight Mile. Um, what else? Um, Otsuichi, a novelist and film director who worked on Goth and Calling You and Zoo. And To Ubukata, rather notably, Le Chevalier Dion, Psychopaths 2, Psychopaths 3, Mardok Scramble, pretty uh, you know, well-known person there, and manga creator uh, Mari Yamazaki, who did Thermai Romai and Olympia Kiklos. So pretty uh, uh, big deal, and their plan is like this is going to be you know, more Netflix originals um, as, um, as all that stuff. Uh, they've already announced that Clamp has produced 20 character designs for this upcoming anime project. So that's pretty darn cool. Uh, we'll be curious to see what's, what's going to go on there. We were actually talking about this on the Discord and uh, noting that Clamp is well known for its, um, or for their distinctive character designs, but those designs have actually gotten more, I don't know, standard over the past, you know, the, the, the recent years. So their recent work doesn't actually look that um, uh, weird, <laughs> for lack of a better term, or that distinctive compared to uh, the way they used to. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, how visually distinctive that Clamp show is, or if it looks more like any other anime, quite possible. Um, moving on to some other sad news, uh, Studio Laguras, a background studio, an anime studio that does backgrounds, um, has announced they're going to dissolve in June due to, quote, various circumstances, which is usually key for, um, something bad happened and we can't talk about it in public. Who knows? Um, it's only been around since March 2013, but it worked on everything from I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, Mob Psycho 100, Seasons 1 and 2, Ghost in the Shell, the new movie, Devil Man Cry Baby, uh, Empire of Corpses, Gintama, the final movie, bunch of other things. Always sad to see a studio involved in anime have to close its doors, and uh, we hope everyone involved is able to uh, find new work and move on. Um, also sad news this week, Excuse me. There we go. Um, Junichi Goto, a voice actor uh, involved in shows uh, including the title character for Inferno Cop, um, was also in Space Patrol Luluko, and had minor roles in Ninja Slayer the Animation, Detective Conan, SSS Gridman, and others. Uh, he sadly passed away this week riding on a motorcycle, um, collided with a sidewall on, um, in Tokyo around 9 a.m. on Monday and uh, w uh, was uh, sent to the hospital unconscious, uh, but was dead on arrival. Sadly, he was only 40 years old.
So very sad. Um, always when a voice actor passes away, I would say our condolences to his friends and family. Uh, moving on um, to an interesting news story this week. Um, a new manga by Osamu Tezuka was published this week, which is a neat trick considering he's been dead for several decades. Um, this new manga called Paidon was released this week by feeding a bunch of Tezuka plot lines and characters to an AI and then asking it to create a story synopsis out of all of those. So and you've probably seen online tools where you can you know, type the first few paragraphs of a story and it will write the next paragraph based on all of the different stories that have been fed into it, that kind of thing. It's basically that, from what I can tell. Um, basically, it's, it's a whole bunch of, of real Tezuka storylines packed into this AI, and it came up with its own sort of variant uh, version of that. So this is a manga. The, uh, the concept is... Let's see here. Where do I have that? Um, got to scroll, got to scroll, got to scroll. Um, where is the plot line? Uh, there we go. Um, it's set in 2030 in a, an intellectual, uh, you know, uh, society. Uh, the hero lives in a city park, kind of interesting, uh, in the company of a talking bird named Apollo. He's approached by a pair of sisters who um, uh, ask for help to find their father. Very, very Tezuka concept. The, um, now, to be clear, um, the manga was then drawn by people at Tezuka Productions, like real humans. All the AI did was take story ideas and characters and sort of recombine this into this new story concept. Um, very interesting idea. And now, obviously, there's nothing this AI did that existing people couldn't do. Um, and this is really more interesting as a concept than as a, you know, a change in the, in the face of, of animation. But it's a neat idea and remarkable to see. And I definitely like to check out the manga and to see how much it, uh, um, it matches the master's work. And I'm sure it's pretty close considering the Tezuka, um, uh, the Tezuka company put it out. You know, they put the time and money into it. And, and obviously they had to actually write the script. Like it didn't write all of the dialogue or anything. But neat idea, interesting concept, you know. Sure, fine. Um, moving on to the ongoing saga of interspecies reviewers. Um, after being dropped by Funimation and other, um, other places, there was a Twitter uh, an announcement from the Twitter account for um, interspecies reviewers that Gifu Broadcasting is going to start airing the anime. Um, actually started this past Friday, just yesterday, as I'm uh, uh, recording this. Um, they'll air the first two episode of the regular version on Friday, and then two episodes every day to catch up. Uh, and it'll, it'll then air an episode every week, as usual, from episode 8 on up until episode 12th, ending April 3rd. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Um, to be clear, the regular version is still airing on KBS Kyoto um, and BS11, a satellite channel, with the unedited version still running on ATX. So things have been, you know, shifting around, but it's getting a you know, fair amount of play now, apparently. Just like the protagonists of the anime. Um, moving on to other note about more adult topics. This is apparently the theme to, uh, uh, tonight. Um, an Australian senator has um, called for a review of a lot of the anime uh, released in Australia um, cons um, concerned about child exploitation. Um, senator Sterling Griff has asked to, for a review of all anime and manga currently accessible in Australia. That seems like an easy job. Um, considered um, uh, concerned about their, uh, the depiction of child exploitation in there, um, and the uh, issue being that in Australia, um, even drawings of underage characters uh, in, engaged in any sort of adult situations is considered the same as real life characters, um, or at least they are uh, in, in the. Um, um, in the eyes of the law, that is equivalent. So um, the thing is, there's a lot of anime that feature underage characters in rather adult situations. So he basically says, I think a lot of folks have skirted underneath this law, and uh, there needs to be a big review. And the reason I've got Eromanga Sensei over there is that Eromanga Sensei is the one that he pointed out um, as having some uh, um, some concerning things, including incest theme, uh, incest themes. Excuse me. Um, saying, many scenes are so disturbing, I just won't, I just can't describe them. Um, now, 
as anime fans, we can laugh at this, but, you know, the laws do state that, you know, any material featuring underage characters in adult situations is technically illegal. Um, and so that does need to be addressed if indeed this material has been put out in Australia in violation, uh, technically, of Australian laws. So we'll see where that goes. Um, you know, th this has happened before. Um, certainly, in fact, in Australia, it's happened before, where folks have uh, um, raised some concerns over the content of anime and manga. Who knows where that's going to go? But, you know, fair enough. Um, and I'll definitely let you know if that goes anywhere. Finally, some good news for Gundam fans. The 40th anniversary of Gundam is finishing up with a bunch of great um, projects for Gundam including a transforming Gundam. Now, they kind of played up a lot of this about how transforming it is. From what I can tell, it, it's basically a Gundam unicorn where the little V thing goes, and then it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes all by itself. Uh, and I think it lights up, um, like, on its own. I think that's basically the, uh, uh, um, well, it's all they've shown off, I'll put it this way. Um, so we'll see how that goes, uh, or the, how much that does. Um, there is some other cool stuff coming, however, um, as they've announced they're going to release a model of the RX-78 II made out of Gundanium. Um, Gundanium being the super alloy in the series of Gundams, but basically on the series in the, in the, in the, the world of Gundam. Um, but the thing is, they've actually like made a custom alloy for these kits. Yes, imagine that. Um, that's going to be interesting. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be real cheap. <sighs> we'll see. And they'll also be doing uh, various other model kits and events for uh, Gundam, specifically around Gunpla. The, the big theme of this um, is that there's going to be a whole bunch of new kits, a bunch of events, and um, just a bunch of excitement around Gunpla, including more stuff in the Gundam Build Divers universe and Gundam Build in general, because my gosh, that is working. People are watching that, and people are buying Gunpla. So, you know, good news there. Um, so, yeah, if you're into Gundam and into Gundam model kits, um, there's plenty more fun stuff on the way there. Um, and I gotta admit, that is a really fun part of fandom. If you're not into it, maybe now is the time. Hey, who knows? Um, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun hobby. So, hope you all uh, enjoyed that. Hope you all found that interesting. Thank you all for watching, as always. See you next week.